I want to say thank you for coming to our webinar today. We are going to be looking at scholarship research and financial aid sorting in the MCIS. Real quick, I'm going to flash some contact information for you. My name is Gabe Alderson. I am the AmeriCorps VISTA serving at the Montana Career Lab over at the Montana Department of Labor. And I am here today to give you a little walkthrough and show you how some students might be able to use the MCIS to help them on their great hunt for scholarships and grants and other kinds of financial aid. You know, there's, there's a lot of options out there. It's not always really easy to you know, figure out exactly what may be right for you, you know? So very quickly, we're gonna share a new screen here. We're gonna come over to the Career Lab page. Share. And here we are at the Montana Career Lab home page where we have a variety of tools and a variety of resources that uh, anybody can use, anybody from a student to a parent, to an educator, to an adult job seeker, uh, for all kinds of things, of learning jobs and various kinds of resources for teachers to use for their students and all kinds of fun things. And what we're going to focus on mostly today is this guy right here, the MCIS. One of the many tools we have in today's tool of focus. Now I've already got the Career Lab page open for us real quick. So we can go ahead and try to get started. We have a lot to cover today. So as you might know, you know, when you're choosing your financial aid and all this kind of stuff, isn't that this is not something you just get or you just start getting. Sometimes there is this attitude that uh, young folks get confronted with to say, you know, when you're gonna go to college, you need to get some financial aid. Like this is something you get at the store, you know, stop at the store and get some financial aid and a loaf of bread on your way home. But we know that that's not actually how it works. It takes a lot of thought and a lot of effort. And before you even get started on how to pick financial aid, you need to know what you need your financial aid for, don't you? You need to know what school you'll be going to. You need to know what, or at least have an idea of what program you might be studying, what kind of degree you might be after, how long you might be doing these kinds of things. These are all important questions that go into determining what kind of financial aid might be right for you. So we're going to start, and we're going to look at some of those things that might be good starting places that help students determine what might be right for them. So on the MCIS page, when you log in, uh, you will come to either the high school or the adult version of the MCIS, which you can tell uh, if you don't know right off the bat which, which MCIS you're using. You can come up to this red bar and you can look at the color. of it. If it is red, if you're looking at a red bar, you're on the high school version. If you're up here and you're looking at a blue bar, it's going to be the same blue color right here, this, this dark blue. You're on the adult side, right? And when you're on the uh, adult side of the MCIS, there's not too many differences when it comes to looking fi for financial aid. But the kind of financial aid they might be looking for, uh, there, it might be different. It might be non-traditional, um, older than high school student, more than you know, uh, financial aid for freshmen and things like that. But we have options for them too. We'll get there. So on our MCIS page, we are on the high school site. We are red. We're going to come down to the education tab real quick, and we're going to come down to Montana schools. Uh, we're going to do we're going to do a little bit of research. We're going to find out exactly what it is we might be um, looking for. Now, for our hypothetical student and scholarship uh, search here, we're going to stay in the state of Montana. Uh, odds are good that working with students, you've come across more than a couple who say, "Hey." I'd rather um, go to school and do things somewhere else in Montana. And we thought, just fine, you know, to each their own. The, the world's a big place, but uh, we are the Montana Career Lab, so we focus mostly on the state of Montana. Now, uh, just for fun, we're going to, let's say, we're going to start with just say uh, a student who thinks they know what school maybe they want to go to. A lot of students will go to a school that's close to them, or maybe they had um, family members, brothers, sisters, friends, whoever, who went there and they're fairly familiar with. Oh, we're just going to, for fun, we're gonna uh, start off with uh, MSU and Billings, right? So we can come to the MSU Billings page and we can start trying to determine what exactly we should be looking for um, in our financial aid hunt. And right over here on the left-hand bar, the helpful left-hand bar where all the helpful information is kept. We can gonna come over here to financial aid real quick. We're gonna pop over and we're gonna see what the financial aid office looks like. They have their own website, which is great. They have a list of their own scholarships, which is great. You don't have to Google that up. Nobody wants to spend time on Google if they don't have to. And one of the really interesting things we want to look at is who is receiving uh, financial aid? We can come down here, who received it? We can come down to the freshmen and say 340 out of 467 
freshmen received financial aid. And that's right around 70%. That's pretty dang good. If you're, if you're a student and say, it's like, I, I really rely on financial aid. I need to go to a school that has a pretty dang good chance um, of getting me some. Well, right here, you can see this, say 70%. 70 is, you know, it's not 100%, but it sure as heck ain't 0%. And if you look at all undergraduates, 1357 out of 1765, that's still right around that 70% mark. I want to say it's one or 2% higher. So consistently for your entering fresh out of high school students and consistently for your maybe not so fresh out of high school students, financial aid is available at the school. So that right there might be a real bonus to some people say, hey, I might go down this route. Then come down a little further and say, well, what are some financial aid programs at the school themselves? You And uh, there's the standards, right? There are a number of loans that are available for basically just about everybody. We don't say no to loans, but it's not free money. So that's usually not where we like to start. Come down to the more freeish kind of money. We can see where there's some federal Pell grants, um, privately sponsored scholarships and grants. I'll tell you right now that MSU Billings, um, the privately sponsored ones and school sponsored ones are big, 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 big time. So if you're uh, into the into the public thing and into the public money, this might be a good way to go, right? And merit-based scholarships. Some students, they're going to scholarships. Maybe they don't want to spend a whole bunch of time looking at every single scholarship under the sun. They want to focus on what's right for them. They can do that too. They have them for sports, special achievements and academics, and art, work city, veterans benefits. So this is just a good way to get an idea and say, hey, this is a school who really might be in, you know, in terms of financial aid, a friendly school to go to. Once and to follow that, we can say, well, heck, how about the actual cost? Like what kind of money might I actually need to be getting in financial aid to pay for this place? Your in-state tuition, $40. $4,485. That is not bad at all, especially if you're trying to go there out of state. That's not what you want to do, right? Now, of course, your tuitions vary. A lot of people uh, expect that the tuition refund policy. This is really nice to see right here. If you're trying to look up tuition refund policies uh, in on the school website or in school literature, that can be a little bit of a barrier to hunt down. So it's fun to come here and just see maybe what you can be expecting in terms of needing money. Now let's just say all oh, that's great. All oh, that's fantastic. We're loving, we're loving looking at that. We're loving MSU Billings. Let's actually focus on some financial aid for MSU Billings. Let's do it. Under the education tab, we can pop right over here to this, where can I get help paying for a school section? And we'll see that there are some options for if you have a financial aid sort, financial aid in general, and Montana scholarships. Now we're going to start here in financial aid in general, because this gives us the biggest and broadest overview of all the different kinds of financial aid that might be available. Big and broad is a heck of a place to start. You know, it's it's, uh, you're probably not going to find everything you want in the first five minutes, but you can get an idea of what really might be available. Uh, if you if you look at uh, certain kinds of scholarship hunting apps, I'm not sure what you would call them, uh, the various kinds of programs and websites for students, um, if they go to Google and they type in uh, scholarships or how do I get scholarships or what scholarships are there, things like that, the websites and uh, apps that come up, right? Things like Scholly, things like that. Uh, the way those are structured, uh, of course they work and we would never tell someone that they should never use them, but the information that's on them can be somewhat manipulated. You know, the, the schools who are willing to give some money to the website or the app, they will rate their things higher or give them, make them easier to find, things like that. So in order to get around those kinds of things, sometimes you might want to come to a place like this where just every piece of financial aid under the sun is kept and say, you know, what might be for me, what might not be for me. Now, like I said, that's the long way of doing it. We have these based in clusters um, off the top. So you can kind of break it down maybe in something you might be uh, interested in specifically or might apply to you specifically. Uh, aids and awards at the top um, for Montana residents, because that's where we start. But most of the students we talk to are Montana residents, right? You can see that there are um, quite a bit of these and we'll come down to MSU Billings, our little hypothetical school we were talking about. And I wanna give you a view of what, it, FVCC, by the way, if you have a community college oriented student, that's a lot of financial aid. So that's always a good way to go. But we're gonna come down to Montana Billings and you can see here, starting right here, 
this list is very, 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 very long. MSU Billings, um, for whatever reason it might be, this list is still going. Uh, we're only on J. MSU Billings offers more in terms of school and private kind of financial aid. And we're only just not the bottom of the list down here. Uh, school and private financial aid than any other school in the state. Like kind of, kind of a lot actually. Uh, and these will range, there, there's so much stuff in here. This will range everything from uh, just grants, endowments, and scholarships, everything from uh, you need minimum GPAs or you need to be focused on certain kinds of things, all the way up to there's no requirements, really. Uh, you need to be a student at the school and you need to be able to apply for the financial aid and you can uh, get yourself in line for the money. And some of these are actually worth kind of a lot, anywhere from a few hundred to a few thousand dollars. And we saw the in-state tuition for MSU Billings and at some $4,400 a year. If you were able to stack a couple of these up, uh, you could really get yourself started and save yourself quite a bit of money. And just for uh, an example, let's say um, oh, you were, let's say you're interested in uh, pursuing mathematics and mathematics education, one of those kinds of people, and you saw this uh, David and Chubbins Davidson Mathematics Education Down Scholarship, you say, hey, that sounds like maybe it's for me. You can click on that. And it just brings you to the basic page for what might be, um, or what the scholarship might be about. You know, you can see that it's variable. That doesn't really help us. It could be anywhere small, anywhere big. Uh, selection based on 3.25 GPA. That's not too bad. Uh, it's for people who were open, only juniors and seniors. So no freshies, um, specific majors. It gives you a deadline to apply. That's always really nice. The procedure and the contact information, all this kind of stuff. So you can come in here and you can see this and say, hey, this is for me. Uh, or say, hey, maybe this isn't for me because I'm a freshman. But if this was for you, you would say, I love this. And you would hit this save button. I hope y'all are seeing the save button up here. We love the save button. You need to love the save button. The students need to love the save button. Uh, as you're going through all this work and you're doing all this research, if you don't save any of it, you're going to have to come back and do all of this again. Nobody likes to do anything twice if they don't really have to. Uh, so always be hitting the save button. So that's that's just looking at uh, that's just looking at what's available in terms of financial aid. This is this is the long way of doing it, right? This is not the short way of doing it, but it, it demonstrates how much financial aid is available um, at a certain kind of school. And MSU Billings really takes the cake here. Uh, U Mustard also has quite a bit to offer, so but not quite as much. So that's always something to consider. And there's other clusters too. Uh, if you're a clusters, if you're an academically um, motivated kind of person, and that's really where you want to put all of your focus, then that's fine too. If you're an engineering kind of person, you want to stay engineering focused, that's fine too. Now, the only issue with things like that is that, you know, those are clusters for those specific kinds of programs and things. So if you were looking for something that's a heck of a lot more generalized, you might not see it in those places. So that's something to keep in mind, right? This is not, there's a lot of things to keep in mind. Hunting for scholarships is not quite as easy as some people make it out to be for the students. So we'll come back up here and in, in an effort to kind of maybe make it a little bit easier on themselves, we do have a financial aid sort option. Now the financial aid sort option is fairly intuitive at first sight, right? You're going to use various kinds of criteria to sort down the uh, options you might want and the options you don't want in order to make your life a little bit easier. We can come here and you, you might notice that there is a left-hand bar over here and you might say like, well, what's your left-hand bar over here? I'm not doing a bunch of research. Well, there's a left-hand bar over here because these each of these is going to be an individual page of sorting. So there's going to be six pages of sorting. Right? And in six pages of sorting, you're going to comb through 3,440 pieces of financial aid. That's a lot of financial aid. You're going to do it across six pages and check boxes. It might seem to you like, well, gosh, over six pages and all these check boxes, uh, there is some room for error potentially, and you would be absolutely correct. This is going to work in a way that reduces down what you don't want. That's the idea, right? So if you go through and you're checking these boxes and you're not being 
fairly specific and conscientious about what you're doing. You're just kind of saying, you know, like, oh, well, I'm a man and you click this box. Uh, I'll show you exactly what happens. So we'll continue. And we have taken 3,422 pieces of financial aid off the list and we are down to 18. That means as we go through the rest of these next five pages, we'll only have 18 pieces of financial aid to choose from. That is not enough, right? Uh, I mean, 18 is better than none, but 18 out of more than 3,000 is not enough. So if you see something like that, if you flick a box and you move forward and you come over and you see that all of your financial aid has been taken off the list, you can probably say to yourself, hey, I might want to uncheck one of those things and go back and see what I did. Because I'll guarantee you that if you're a male in the state of Montana, there are more than 18 pieces of financial aid that you are eligible to choose from, right? So you always want to take this seriously, but you don't want to be uh, too specific about it if you don't really have to be. So for something like this, I might actually recommend most Montanans leave it blank. Uh, there, are, there is so much really general financial aid available out there that getting too specific sometimes can harm you. Now, there are going to be times also when being very specific about it is going to help you. You saw that huge long list. You can see right here, there's 3,000 pieces of financial aid you might be eligible for. You might say, well, I don't really want to do that. I really want something that's specifically for something. Uh, we have found that the, the spe those specific um, criteria that most people focus on that they take really seriously usually involve their academics, their programs of study, and their financial need. And, and so that is uh, what affects their scholarship hunt the most, if it's going to be specific, is going to be, you know, what, what is their academic strong suit? What are they interested in? What can they do? Where can they get that financial aid and, and actually stand out? Programs of study, what kind of degrees are going to be going after? Uh, what kind, if, if there's a way to narrow down the competition that way, uh, general, general financial aid, there's lots of competition. Really specific financial aid, there's a little bit less competition. So if you can narrow that down to a program of studies, uh, you know, biology or engineering or welding or whatever it might be, uh, that's a really good way to go. And we'll, and we'll show you how that works right here. You can skip the other pages if you want. So we can come down to programs of study and we can say, tell you what, I don't want to do all that competing and everything else. I really want my odds to be up. So, and I'm going to get into, oh, we're just going to stay at the top here. Let's say biological sciences. We're going to look at some, something biological in terms of, um, let's say, let's say, let's say, so we live in the times of COVID. Let's look at cellular and molecular biology. Um, we're going to include awards that only match that selection. We're down to 27, not a whole lot, but let's just say, that that is your your main criteria. Uh, I want the stuff that applies. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to cure coronavirus once and for all. I am done with this stuff. Um, this is something that you can do. You can narrow it down to 27 out of 3,000. Ignore the rest and see if any of these really apply to you. Uh, how about the Biochemical Society from the Krebs Memorial Scholarship? I wonder if that's Maynard G. Krebs. I know I'm joking. I, I'm not sure anybody here even remembers the TV character Maynard G. Krebs. And you can see here that this is a $25,000 scholarship, but it's only good for one award, right? So you might say, hey, this is a way to narrow it down, maybe reduce that competition. But every now and then you'll come across something absolutely crazy. A $25,000 award does not happen very often. And as you can imagine, there aren't a lot of them available. Uh, and of course, they'll want you to study for your PhD in biochemistry or allied biomedical science. So there's always a lot to consider. You might say, that's perfect. That's exactly what I was going to do. I can get this guy. You can save it or you can go back and say, you know what? Maybe that one's not for me. Uh, and you can move on and look at some other ones. But uh, the folks over at Novus Bio, that's got a due date in July. So we got plenty of time to apply for that one. Two awards made of $1,500, various kinds of sciences, any two-year, four-year college or university. That's really nice. Um, have a major declared July 31st, and of course, the contact information. So that is just, if you like that one, of course, save it. If you like it, save it. That's, we always want you to be in that mindset. Now, just as an interesting little side note here, the way we put this together, uh, the, schools, the schools make this information available to the folks who run these kinds of programs. And the folks like us who run these kinds of programs, we take that information, you know, we make it 
for our program and make it available to you. If they skip a beat, whatever beat it might be, you know, there's a box and they forgot to put the deadline in it. We don't really have a way to correct for that. We can go through them to the best of our ability, see if anything's missing. But as you might imagine, out of 3,400 pieces of financial aid, we might miss one every now and again. So it's always really important to save this information and then also cross-reference it. Um, there's schools are staffed by humans. Humans make mistakes. Unfortunately, we do not have the manpower to correct for some of those mistakes. Always do your cross-referencing. Um, always have your students be vigilant. Right? And also, you never know when they change something in the middle of the day and then they choose not to inform us about it. Uh, it's a updated information is always better. Right? So let's go back. Uh, let's go back to the sword real quick. That's, so we've seen how uh, narrowing down by a program of study or something like that can really make give you those specific pieces of financial aid. Now, financial need is another big one. We like to focus here, unfortunately, that it doesn't really give you much in terms of being specific. It says applicant or family has financial need. That's not really defined anywhere, right? There's no, what is financial need? So this is one where you kind of want to click it, see what's available. And then if, if you're not, um, if you're not seeing something that maybe applies to you, uh, you might want to go back and say, hey, maybe what what financial aid or what financial need means you know i am eligible for i'm not eligible for it it'll it'll really depend so that that is uh, a specific little note that we like to make but that is the general financial aid sorter and intuitive at first but then some interesting tricks you want to keep keep an eye on and you make sure you're always hitting that save sort and if you ever really beef it don't go back just hit start over do it again right that key does not work so well in the mcis just restart now very quickly, we have a few minutes here. I want to talk about apprenticeships because uh, the apprenticeship program is one way to have education paid for without having to pay for it yourself necessarily. It's not specifically a grant, but you're going to go to school to get that kind of training that they would need for you, and you're not going to have to pay for it, right? And then you could take that education, that training, go do other things with it if you wanted to. Um, so we'll come over to the Montana Registered Apprenticeship page just to give you kind of an idea of what it looks like and what's available out there. We're going to come over to the apprenticeship sponsors very quickly. We're going to scroll down to the scroll down to the map here and you can get an idea of what sponsors or uh, what uh, what apprenticeships are available and what kind of place and in what kind of density. And you can see that most of it follows the economic boot of Montana, right? There's not a lot of not a lot of apprenticeships, unfortunately, available in eastern Montana, there are, though there are a few. And those are just the sponsors, right? These are just the folks who are offering an apprenticeship. We can actually come up here, click this button, and we can see what the actual apprenticeship positions themselves are. And we can see that there were 20, almost 2,500 last year. So this is not a, a, a very narrow field, right? There's a, there's a lot of openings here. And we can see at the top, it's mostly electricians and plumbers and trades, right? We When we think of apprenticeships, we usually think of trades, but there are some interesting oddballs in here that maybe you wouldn't originally think about, such as uh, medical records, uh, information, or medical records and IT, medical coders, transcriptionists and the like. Uh, very few people know that that is a, a position that you can apprentice into and then take it on to do other kinds of things. Childcare worker, not something that many people know, can, uh, is a, a position that you can apprentice your way into and then take the information and go do other things with it. Roofers and tapers and mill rights and whatnot. Medical transcriptionists, health service managers, registered nurses uh, is not something people might be on about. Travel agents. I mean, some folks out there might not even know travel agents exist anymore, much less you can apprentice your way into them and have your education paid for. So in terms of, you know, happen, getting, that, getting that financial help from someone else's uh, big pockets, apprenticeships, hey, it's a way to go. It's a non-traditional way to go, but it works for lots and lots and lots of people. And that is right about it for our half hour. We've got five minutes here at the end. And I was hoping to, last time we did this, I had to unmute everybody here. And I want to free up the time for some questions, maybe run through a couple of examples. If anybody can think of a, uh, a good example they have um, that, 
you know, is relevant to them or a student that they know or something along those lines, uh, you are feel feel free to ask. Um, if you're not muted, I've given you the ability to unmute. If you can type it in the chat, you can do whatever you want. I would just like to spend that last five minutes here to answer some questions if they are an option. No? And I've also will flash back up the uh, contact info for you too, so you can get our information. And of course, when I do this, I have a difficult time seeing if anything's in a chat or anything. So feel free to use your microphone. I don't seem to have a lot popping up right now. Well, maybe I'm just a fabulous teacher and nobody has any questions, um, which is good too, I'll accept that. So our contact information is here. We are a support service for you. That is what we're here for. Uh, I'll let you know that I am online 24 hours for you. If you're up at 10 o'clock at night trying to get this done and there's some roadblock you can't through, give me a call, send me an email. I am here to help you. Uh, some folks do their work late at night and I get that. So have no fear, have no worries. And that is what we're here for. And yeah, I'm not seeing anything in the chat. Not hearing any questions, all right. Well, thank you very much, folks. Um, I'm sure.